Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. In this video, I'm going to be painting up another Kickstarter exclusive from Zombicide Black Plague. Now, this one is Morgan. It's going to be using most, mostly, it's not all going to be contrast, but mostly contrast. It's going to be quick, it's going to be easy, it's going to be simple, it's going to be the sort of thing you can do in a few minutes while holding a baby, which is basically how I now have to paint. Now, I'm going to be starting with his inner robe here. I'm going to be using Fire Slayer Flesh. There's three reasons for that. One is I've never used this colour. Um, I want to use it, give it a try, see what it looks like. It's a lighter brown than sort of Wildwood. The second reason is I want to paint this in Wildwood to make it darker. And then the third and most important reason is I cannot find my Wildwood, so I don't have it to hand at the moment. So we'll just try, we'll try Fire Slayer Flesh out. I should mention the materials, I guess, that I'm using. So it'll be contrast paint. Oh, that is a lovely brown. It's about what I want. Maybe going to need two coats of this just to get it quite as dark as I, I want once it's dried. Is that the right bit? I could do with a reference material. It's kind of hard to see, but yeah, I think, I think that's, I think that's his inner robe, isn't it? It'll do, whatever. Um, I could do with a reference material nearby to see what's going on. But yeah, this, this looks a bit right. So yeah, as I was saying, I should just mention some of the materials I'm using. So it's going to be contrast paints. They're fairly standard from Citadel. I'm going to be using my Red Grass Games number two brush, uh, which is, I think it's, it's amazing for slurping up and applying contrast. Uh, this is a particularly almost, I wouldn't say it's completely ruined, but the tip is well on its way out, as I mentioned in every video, and yet I don't use any of my new ones because I don't think it matters to, oh, I don't want it on there. Let me just rinse this off. That's actually his outer cloak, so I'll just thin that down. We're gonna be cover brush liquor. I'm gonna be covering that with black anyway, so it's pretty much gonna disappear. Um, so as I was saying, yeah, double zero, double uh, number two Redgrass Games. I've got my Wash Wizard here to stop. Oh, you even saw I caught it then. Nothing fell over. So that's keeping that nice and protected. Got a hobby holder to grip it. And last but not least, some blue tack. No, we've got something else. What's the other thing? Ah, it's primed in Wraith Bone Primer. So that's the Citadel Primer, which I'm still not sold on. I don't, I don't, I'm not convinced you actually need the Citadel one, but I've got it and it doesn't actually cost that much more. It is more expensive than other primers, but what's a, what's a few dollars between friends, right? And um, yeah, it seems, seem, seems like it works. And while I've still got some, I'll keep using it. Once I've run out, I'll start trying, up, trying out some of the primers I already had, See, and then I'll get more of an opinion for that. But yeah, so that's the first color done. I'll obviously neaten this up bit closer to my face it's kind of hard to get in here with this brush I'll probably go down to my red grass games double zero for that but I'll get it nice and close to my face and tidy that up off camera so as I've just said a couple of times first been interrupted by a phone call and then by my children um I've done one coat of the fire slayer flesh I'm pretty happy I like I like I love the color the color's nice I might need two coats to make it look more like the reference material which I obviously like to stick with and then I had started but I've lost the footage painting his outer robe in black templar which is the black contrast paint which essentially looks as you can see this is already dried it looks a little bit lighty well not light looks like dark gray it pulls into black in the recesses and where it's runs off the highlighted raised parts it's a it's a lighter lighter black it's a it's a medium gray i guess well probably quite a dark gray to be honest but you can see the difference between the recessed areas and the raised bits again i'm going to be using the double the double the double one brush the two the big brush they only do two sizes so it's nice and simple other than for me to let you know which is which seems like it's more complicated than it should be but that's just because the names are similar double zero and two right both either two zeros or just the number two uh anyway this is gonna end up being basically the majority of the work i think most of this miniature is this outer cloak and it's very 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 easy to paint i mean that's why i'm picking these miniatures i have i'm, I'm struggling for time but a lot of us are so hopefully it's a nice demonstration of what can be achieved with very, very little time. And the accuracy is just, it doesn't need to be as good. You can see I'm rushing through this. I will go off camera and get all the edges. And I'm not switching brushes necessarily, but I might downsize on some of it. It's more just that I need it a little bit closer to me. 
and a little bit steadier and just take a little bit more time on it. But you know, the whole miniature is going to take a handful of minutes and that's what I'm going for in these videos at the moment. It's not necessarily where you want to start with your painting career. I'm not sure contrasts necessarily makes it that much easier, especially if you're not really understanding the concepts, which I think traditional painting, I think those army painter zombie side sets are a nice position to start from. But now I've painted a few sets of zombie side, I'm now more moving towards how fast can I get the remaining characters that I didn't particularly care about to paint properly uh, painted up. So once again, I'll just go and tidy up the edges off camera and that'll be the black done. So that's the black all dry and I just spent at least 10 minutes, might have been 15 freaking minutes searching for this wild wood, which is without a doubt the longest amount of time I've spent having to get wood in my freaking life. And as you can tell, I'm a bit annoyed about that. And it was, it was just with all my other contrasts. It, it wasn't anywhere special. I could have not looked anywhere and just got it out of the drawer with the contrast in, but you know, I'm not bitter. I won't hold a grudge against it, but whatever. Anyway, wild wood, it's just gonna, just gonna be on this staff just to give it a different shade of wood to, well, a different shade of brown, I should say, because he's not wearing a wooden robe. As far as I know, it could be, who knows? Can you wear a wooden robe? He'd look a bit like Bender when he, in future armor, when he's made of wood that one episode. Anyway, quick and simple job. Could have just done that with brown, probably make no difference, just a normal piece of, piece of paint, a normal piece of paint, but I had started looking, so I finished looking. Hopefully I've calmed down from the saga that was the wild wood, and I'm gonna be using Basilicum Gray to do the gray, which looks to me like his boots primarily, but I'm also gonna do the dark silver part, so this the top of his staff as well, and the hilt of his dagger, and I'll just, this doesn't look like it's taking particularly well. I might need to shake it a little bit better. I'll just finish showing you roughly where I'm gonna paint anyway while I've started, but I'll maybe just tidy this up off camera with a bit more of a thorough shake of that paint. You know, I've, I've said time and time again, I give army paint a lot of shtick for how long it takes to mix their paints, but these contrast ones, whew, they take forever. One pro tip, so I've actually got the three section wash wizard here and I put them in that and then shake the whole wizard, which allows me to shake three at a time. I think, well, they definitely do a five. They might do, do a bigger number, but I struggle to shake. I, I think I can do the five, but the three is just like about the right limit, but right level for me to do quite easily. So yeah, just doing his boots and the darker bits of silver for Morgan here. Time to give Morgan some flesh for this. It's just gonna be Gulliman's flesh all over his face and both of his hands are on show. Um, try and be a little bit careful around his beard because I will be painting that in as well. Just saves me fixing that up. Oh, his face is, um, is, well, it's obviously very small, but it's surprisingly easy to paint. It's got quite a lot of prominent details, I guess. His ears stick out nicely. His helmet's got a clear line. Let's see, his beard's pretty easy to dodge as well. Getting his neck, it's a little bit tricky to reach. If, it, if it's not obvious, I'm on the double zero brush here. Try and get some on his lips too. Although well, I should check the reference art. Is that his teeth? Who knows? It's his lips. Take a bit out of his eye there where it pulled a bit too much. Now I might want two layers of this because he's looking incredibly pale, but we'll let it dry and see how it looks first. I go too thick. I find with the flesh, it's a good one for less is more. It looks a lot more realistic, a lot more subtle in a thin layer. It's often one that I water down with the contrast medium, but I'm finding, I'm trying to paint these guys so fast, it doesn't matter. It, I don't need it to look amazing. I just need it to look as good as the rest of the miniature. We are going to make this look a lot closer to amazing with some detail work at the end of this and we'll just make sure all the details are popping out make sure he's got his eyeballs in make sure his weapons look nice that sort of thing so nice and easy with the flesh i'll just let that dry and see how it looks 
So as I mentioned before, I was probably likely to add a second coat of that Fire Slayer flesh. And I've done that now, darkening down that robe, matching the reference artwork a little bit closer. I've also painted the first layer of his beard in Fire Slayer flesh as well. Probably do a second coat because in the artwork, it looks like it's the same brown. So I'm just going to tie those in together. While I'm waiting for that to dry so I can paint on this belt i just thought i'd do some of the actual painting now and there's not much to do but we'll start with his little helmet here and this is going to be using army painters rough iron which is a very very dark browny metallic it's like iron now his helmet looks particularly dark so i think this is a perfect color for that what sort of helmet is this it's quite unusual isn't it some sort of like metal skull cap Oh, that reminds me, what character is Morgan? I do not, well, very similar to most of these Kickstarter exclusives that I'm now painting. The reason they didn't get a lick of paint the first time around is because I don't know who they are. They don't They don't mean anything to me. They, I, they've got no pull. So I've painted a lot of the exclusives that I really liked. In fact, I backed, uh, I think it was Green Horde actually, which I wasn't going to back purely because they did a Wolverine Kickstarter, similar with Black Plague, it's always the kick, it's always the exclusives, isn't it, that grabs our attention. I think you can see his um flesh is a little bit pale there. I'll have to do a second coat of flesh. Anyway, that's the that's the iron done, rough iron done. Let that dry. So Morgan's shiny dagger. I'm gonna use Army Painter's Claymore Blade, shining silver, their brightest silver, and just shine up that blade. The last metallic I'm gonna use is Army Painter's machine gun metal and that's going to be to highlight up the darker bits of silver so the bits i did basically in the basilicum gray which gives it a really nice base coat and then just some edge highlighting and some of the raised detail just to pop out that staff i'll do the same on the back a little bit on this ball bit what's the ball bit of a staff called I bet it's got a name staff balls so we'll do that and then we've still got the handle and hilt pommel of the dagger to do here just catch a bit on there again just really edge highlighting it making that gray give the illusion that you painted it silver it's a nice little effect we'll also use a smidge of machine gun metal to highlight up the edge of his helmet up here catching all the sharp bits at least something like that i'm going to use a tiny bit of agris dunes here and probably well, we'll see. Maybe need two coats, mainly just to cover up the bits which I hit with the Fire Slayer flesh. But we'll see how well this goes on. Uh, it's, it's great, though, to be painting a little bit of detail with contrast paint as well. It's not often you've got the control to do this, but belts are, belts are doing nicely. So I'll let that dry. That was quick. While I'm waiting for the last bits of the contrast paints to dry, and before I do the final detail, which I'll probably do off camera, but I'll come back and show you. It's basically, I'm going to do him some eyes and he's got a bit of string at the top of his um, tunic. That's a good word, that robe, uh, which I'll just paint on with some slightly off white, something like brain matter beige by the army painter. But yeah, I'll do that off camera just because it's, it's, I can't help anybody do it any better seeing me do it badly on camera doesn't help anybody so I'll just do it off camera where I get it a little bit closer to my eyes and take my time putting in those final details with a very very thin brush now as I often say apologies if you've heard this a million times with the base I'd recommend doing something a little bit more it makes it more fun makes it more unique especially on the heroes but while you're deciding what to do which is often my excuse having the base painted is just going to finish off the model it's going to go from I'd say even like looking 70% done to 100%, like the base, that final touch really, really makes it look so much better than leaving that messy paint on the bottom where you've just missed the, the miniature. It brings your focus back to the model that you've painted. It's just, uh, and for the, this is going to take, how long are we at so far? We're at a minute and a half. And if I wasn't talking, I'd be even faster. So a minute and a half just to really finish off your, your base and you can always come back and add terrain on top of this and paint it back in so it's well worth a couple of minutes just to just to get it finished on the shelf yeehaw we have finished another zombie side black plague kick 
Kickstarter exclusive. Completely finished very, very quickly, very, very easily. It's not my best work ever. I will happily admit that, but it took no time at all. And it was very little effort. And it's just another hero, another survivor to now choose from when we play that game. I don't know who this character was based on. Let me know in the comments below if you know yourselves. It's not going to be one I have probably ever picked just on aesthetics reasons. I need to go and read his hero card. Maybe he is awesome sounding, but I'm sure somebody is going to pick him. And it's just, it's nice to have variants. We are actually often play with just random characters. So this is another card we can chuck in the shuffle and deal out another random character, just spicing up the game. So it's just great to get another one. Probably wouldn't have painted this otherwise because I wasn't going to sink an hour or two hours into painting him. 20 minutes, 30 minutes. I think this might have even been less, you know, maybe 15, but it's done. It's great. I'm happy to have another miniature done. Guys, everything I've used in this video will be in links below. Some of them will be affiliate links, which do help out the channel. Feel free to click that. If you want to support us more, hit subscribe, check out Patreon, all the usual YouTube things. Thank you ever so much for watching. You've watched it, now go and paint it. I'll see you again next week. When I get a phone call, I lose my footage. So, uh, when I get shattered by my children, I lose my concentration. A splash of contrast and Bob is your mother's brother.